Well, happy Thursday, everyone. This is Jojo Bennington. Just want to welcome you to our Empowering Healthy Women um, weekly 30 minutes me time to fill our cup and and just take some take some moments for ourselves. And um, before we start off this week, I just really want to have us um, take a few moments and um, let's take really 59 seconds of silence for um, the souls that we lost over the weekend and think about the people who are injured and the families who are touched. So everybody just take a deep breath with me. And Wow, did that feel like a really long time, right? So, you know, we do this every week to create a community of sisterhood, to just be able to take some time for ourselves and and talk about the challenges that, that as women we face and to be able to fill our cup up and feed our souls and... A few weeks ago, I think we're on week eight. Um, my friend and partner, Liddy, um, we decided that it was such a great space to be able to create for women who, um, to just have a space to talk about women's health. And that covers so many areas, not just physical, not just when we look in the mirror, but how we feel in our soul and our heart and our mind. and. Um, we were really planning to do something around the physical part of health this week, but with the things that happened over the weekend and um, everyone feeling the heaviness of what happened, um, especially here in Las Vegas, we, we just felt like it was going to be some time to maybe talk about trauma and grief and um, remember the 59 souls that we lost and the over 500 people that are hurt and the families that are forever changed um, so you know I realized how confusing this all is to people and and one of the things that really brought it to my attention was that I I took a moment after on Tuesday I went to a networking meeting where even though we all got together and networked we still recognized what was going on and then that evening as I was sitting outside finishing my work and um, I took a moment to recognize the beauty that was around me and I marked that on Facebook and out of that moment a lot of conversation has been created because I had somebody who um, unfriended me and unfollowed me and spoke out loud because I took a moment to recognize the beauty and they felt that I wasn't supposed to do that because I live in Las Vegas and to me, that felt so crazy and foreign. And why should I not be able to recognize the beauty and be grateful for what's here? Because we've had tragedy. And is that the right output? Is that the right view? Is that what we should do? Is, is silence ourselves and not see the beauty that's around us? And so I was lucky enough to on Tuesday have an amazing soul pop up in my life as I do so often um, 
I have amazing people come into my space. And Holly Davis uh, showed up standing next to me holding my hand in a circle while we recognized the lost souls on Tuesday. And Holly is a counselor and a life coach, but she specializes in trauma and grief. And I felt very drawn to her, and so I invited her into our little community to maybe talk to us a little bit about, you know, what do we do now, and how do we deal with when something hits us so hard? And it's not just our community, and it wasn't just people from Las Vegas. There are people from many areas that were affected by this. And now what do we do? Do we go to a concert again? Do we not ever go into a big public forum? What, you know, how do we deal with that feeling of being afraid and, and the trauma and the grief? So how do we not let this inundate us? And so I asked my new friend, Holly, who is also a Zumba and yoga instructor, um, to come on and just chat with us tonight and, and um, be in our space and help us have some insight on how to deal with these things. And so, Holly, I just want to thank you so much for, for being on with us this evening and um, knowing that it's a tough time. And I'm just going to let you share with us what's on your heart. Thank you, Jojo. Thank you so much for having me. It is a pleasure. I love to talk about wellness and health and the Um, I'm going to answer your question. What do we do? What do we do? How do we deal with this? How do we go forward? And it's exactly what we're doing right now. This is a part of the healing, talking about it, going on Tuesday to the, to the meeting and meeting with other powerful people who want health and wellness and empowerment, and then actually addressing and talking about our feelings and even taking a moment of silence. Those are exactly the things that we have to do. Um, I know for me this week, I went out of my way to go see my girlfriend and drop something off for her, just a little bit of gift. You know, I mean, when's the last someone did that for you, Jojo, knocked on your door and brought you a gift <laughs> and made her sit down and have coffee with me. <laughs> I'm like, hey, um, I just dropped off my kids. So, you know, I had, you know, I, I, I had my pajamas on. And so did she. And she's like, wow, I didn't expect you. And I'm like, I'm, I know. I, we're we're going to talk. And it was just so wonderful. And then later on that afternoon, someone actually came to my house out of the blue and was like, hey, I'm just dropping by and had tea with me in the afternoon. So it's amazing how this time of, of connecting and talking and even when I was um, in a store the other day talking to the clerks and just you know, not pretending like it's not there. And that's what we talked about on Tuesday. When we walk around and pretend like it's not there, it causes for so much more continued trauma, continued stress. And, and really, trauma is what has happened. The healing is, is talking. Everybody knows that when we do talk therapy, and you don't even have to do deep processing. You just have somebody who cares about you and listens. That's where healing begins. So we also know that some of the worst problems that come out of this is when there's isolation, when we're disconnected, or when people feel that they know the best way to grieve. And then they're very happy to tell you. And, and the truth is there's no bad way. There's no wrong way to grieve. Everybody gets to grieve however they want. And I know that the most healthy way, and especially, and just speaking for myself, this is not even clinical, but speaking for myself, the best way is just right here, what we're doing with friends and, and just talking, getting it out, sharing how we feel. Because we're all, we're all out of sorts. Every single, you know, if we weren't, I would be concerned. <laughs> I'd be concerned if we weren't all out of whack. I mean, there's been laughing, there's been crying, there's... I think today's the first day I actually laughed with a, a girlfriend of mine because I just called her out of the blue and just said, I just wanted to say, you know, how much I love you. And I just wanted to tell you that. And I, I just wanted to um, see how you're doing. And she said, I feel very much like I did during 9-11. I'm like, well, that was 16 years ago. We're so much more established now and we're stronger. And she goes, excuse me? 
did you just say we're more sexy now? And I said, well, no, I didn't. But yes, we are. We're sexy and stylish. <laughs> and that was like the first laugh. And I said, and we probably don't hear as well. <laughs> but we are. We're stronger. And people are going to be looking to us now. Or they're going to be looking to us as well for answers. People who've gone through 9-11. And we've gone through a lot of trauma in our country in the last few years. And so we're, we are able now to take the feelings and those memories and everything that's happened through that and all the things that we have established in our lives because of those things and all the things that we see now that are good and we're going to be able to start over to make a new to love people all the more and share all the more and call everybody in your contacts li contact list that you can think of and text them or literally call them and tell them how much you love them so there there can be good that can come out of this absolutely Thank you so much for that. Do you, what do we do? What do we do to not get inundated? To, to not stare at the news 24/7. To not get so caught up in trying to figure out what somebody's motives are. Where, what, what do we do? Like, how much is too much? <laughs> right. Oh. You know, um, that's an interesting question because I, media is not going to like me for this, but I don't watch television, period. I don't watch television at all. And I've, I've developed that uh, habit since I was in college. So it's, I haven't missed television for 25 years. I don't think that my life is any less rich than anybody else's. And I've, I've missed most of it, truly. I watch the news on special occasions. Um, and every once in a while I'll sit down with my kids, you know, I just don't, I'm not, I don't sit down very often. So when I do, it's like Pixar and Disney. And so I watched on Monday a little bit of news and the rest of it, I just turned completely off because I'll go online. You know, every time you go online, there's going to be an update. And so we still, every day you'll see in the headlines, it says still searching for a motive. Okay. So no one knows the motive right now. No one knows. And this, this, that's when this, the conspiracies and we get the thinking and we get to, and, and media and all these other people who are, um, what is it? The trolling and the, just the, the media ridiculousness sets in. And so I avoid it for me. If I'm going to spend any time and even on Facebook, I, I, honestly use it to put the things that I need to put out there that are encouraging, uplifting, share with my family what's going on. Maybe I'll peruse a little, try not to get face hooked into what's going on using my social media really for light and not for um, an escape because it can get to the point where it just robs you of your time, your joy, your peace. It, there's really not a lot of peaceful, wonderful thing. I can only see so many cute kitty cats and I love the great stories when, when there's something great on there and you make me cry. I mean, that's the kind of stuff I love and that's what it's meant for. So for me, I try not to do tirades and, and, um, bash or any of those kinds of things on social media. I think those are for safe people in special times. Um, and, um, boasting my opinion upon other people. That's not what that's for either. There's special times for those things too. And it has to be with people that you have a relationship with. So if someone was able to say to you, Jojo, I don't like the way you're grieving, they better have a really good relationship with you, first of all. And and really even your best friend on the whole planet is gonna give you space and place and allow you to, to do and be however you need to be this week. So for me, I think if you're gonna take any time with media, it needs to be something that's uplifting. So if it's for me, if it's my Twitter account or Instagram, I always follow people that are uplifting and can give me even one little nugget to carry on. And I might even just take a couple of those and keep going. The other thing I use my, my media for are books and things that are uplifting. And I try to, I don't even balance it, the scales. I just take very nary a hair of that kind of resource in. And the rest of it has got to be uplifting, elevating, mood lifting, make me laugh, make me cry. But fill my heart and soul with something good because we'll we'll be thinking about this theory and the conspiracy just like we are with JFK forever. No one will ever know he's gone. There's, no one's going to be able to tell us what happened and why. We don't know. And, and even we're not at that point right now, but a part of the grieving process for all of us is to just accept it is what it is. This bad thing happened and maybe even accept 
that I, Holly Davis, will never know why this man did that. I don't know. What can I do, though? What can I do today? Yeah. Could you could you address a little bit about maybe helping us with a mindset of how do we go forward and feel comfortable in a crowd? Like, I, I want to go to a concert this weekend. Am I going to feel too frightened to do that? Or am I going to be nervous the whole time I'm there and sick to my stomach? And so... Um, what, what's a good thought process for us to be able to move forward and be in those situations? Well, I mean, we live in Las Vegas. This is the number one travel destination of the world. That's what we do. We're Las Vegans. We have the best restaurants, the best shopping, the best entertainment. I mean, we're, if we wanted to stay at home and the streets rolled up at nine, we'd move somewhere else. And, then, and, and that's not who we are. And that's not what we do. So for me, I've, I've grappled with the same thing, coming for, up with the Las Vegas Marathon on the Las Vegas Strip, same starting place as the uh, village. Um, and that's just in three or four weeks with the concert. And so um, that's when I went and had coffee with my girlfriend and, and said, hey, are we gonna do this this, this year? And of course we're, you know, leaning on the side of caution, but let's just be straightforward, it's fear. And I don't know a lot, a lot about life and I can't make any guarantees, but I do know that every time I've lived in fear, I've lost out. And every time that I have gone in love, I've always won so much more than I could have ever expected. And so I, we decided that we were gonna go, we're gonna go in love, we're gonna put on our Las Vegas t-shirts and we're gonna run and we're gonna have fun. And another thing that I can actually, um, help you to do with fear because it's real that feeling of anxiety and continual worry those are real feelings that we're going to have get going going to the store i'm um, being out late do i go to this concert those are going to be real feelings looking behind you those are all side effects of trauma so you've been traumatized so of course you're going to feel that way maybe a lack of sleep i don't think i slept at all last night so some things that you can do for your mind because it's always going to be thinking is instead of thinking of the inertia of how I'm going to get through this concert, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to be protected, what could happen, all these thoughts, think of the outcome. I want to go. I want to enjoy this. I know music is healing. I know being connected is healing. I know moving out in faith and not in fear is healing. And I want to see myself moving forward. Don't know how. Don't know what's going to happen. But I'm not going to... I'm not going to be, I'm not going to stay in the China closet, right? We're, we're going to get out and keep using our life. I, I like that. I use that analogy all the time. I use my finest China all the time for a little cup of coffee in the afternoon because it would rather die being used than look pretty in the China closet. We've, we've got to still live. And a little bit of that worry and a little bit of that anxiety, it will probably be around for a while you know when it is extreme and disordering though, when you're having full on panic attacks, um, when it gets to that point, it's very severe or when you're having nightmares, flashbacks, those kinds of a thing. And even something like this can't even cause that, it's trauma. So being very kind and tender to yourself, listening to those thoughts, deciding which one are rational, which ones are not, and just fighting through with as much love and compassion for yourself as you can. And I say, I say live. Truly, Jojo, live, go to that concert and have fun. <laughs> we need right. it. Absolutely. Thank you. And I love that every time we live in fear, we lose out. That what a great line. That's that's so true. So true. And I um we only I know this these 30 minutes go by so quick, right? So we're I, I just want to open it up if anybody has any questions or they're feeling any specific way or want to share anything um, with Holly, I, I would love to open it up so we can have a dialogue. Laura, do you want me to unmute you? Okay. Holly, this is Laura. Hi, Hi. Laura. Hi. I love what you said, and I love, I bought a I Love Las Vegas shirt, and I'm going to wear it tomorrow. <laughs> um, I just want to say something. You know, we, we know there are tragedies. But in the midst of these tragedies, I got to be in the middle of a miracle relating to Las Vegas. Um, 
I'll just say it like it is. I am planning my son's funeral. He was killed three weeks ago tonight. And I was talking to the people that are going to be facilitating his memorial in Oroville, California. And that woman is dear friends to a 22 year old woman in Oroville, California, whose sister was at that concert. And our Heavenly Father prompted this sister, this 22 year old woman, to FaceTime her sister. And she's going, Oh, brother, she's at a concert. I'm not interrupting her at a concert. And she felt that urging. She FaceTimed her sister. Her sister got up out of her seat and went to a different space so she could FaceTime with her sister when the shooting began. So in the midst of the ugly, there's beautiful, and there are going to be some more of those beautiful miracle stories emerge. And I tell you, I feel so close to eternity right now, from the eternity to the eternity, because I know my precious son is in that space. So if you can realize everybody grieves differently, everybody does. And I'm related to somebody who wasn't killed, but death is death. And who gives a flip what the motive was? It's done. Let's move forward. Anyway, miracles are going to be emerging as a result of that. And I'm done talking. <laughs> you know what? You are such a bright, shining light. And I am so sorry to hear about your son. I do also believe that when it comes to death, I feel closer to all of the people that have passed in my life, life that are gone now. And they're, because they're not gone. They're still with us. They're still with us forever. We carry them in our hearts every day. You're carrying your son with you everywhere you go. And it also, death also gives us an opportunity to love each other more and more and more every single day, right? Every single day. The people you love, you're going to tell them how much you love them and mean it with all sincerity, right? Oh, and feel it when they tell it to me. I never knew that I would want to have people in my space if I ever had to grieve. I did not know how much I needed people. And I am being so blessed. Truly. You have no idea. Truly. And you know, I want to put it out there too. If you need me, you can call me 702-626-9400 afterwards. If you need me, call me. Okay. Bless you. I didn't write that down and I don't have a photographic memory at this moment. Okay. Say it again. It's so easy. 626-626-9400. Yep. 9400. I got it. I forget what your first name yep. is. Holly. 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 Oh, see, the lady I was talking to, her name is Jan Holly, and it was her dear friend that was a part of that miracle. Okay, I don't want this to be about me, but I rejoice for this meeting and this campaign. It's awesome. And Jojo, I love you. I feel so, so blessed to see how tender you are towards the loss of all these people's lives. Thank you, Laura. You know, we, we send you love, and um, we're so sad about the loss. And so thank you for being here with us. And it's lovely that you can always smile no matter what's going on in your space. So we love you. Thank you. I love you too, Jojo. Nice meeting you, Laura. Please call. Thank you, Holly. If you need me. <laughs> I'm doing well, but I will keep your number. Yeah. We have a couple of minutes if anybody would like to add in or... Ask a question of Holly. Hi, this is Lori. Can you... Hey, Lori. Hi. So, uh, Laura, every time you speak, it's always so profound. I was honored and blessed to get to meet you at the conference this last summer. And love goes out to you and family. Um, you know, so we had some friends over at up from the Twin Cities and they anyway it was mid midweek and um, I found out later that their son told us that all his dad could talk about was I got to get up to Ken and Lori's got to get up to Ken and Lori's and while he, they were here we just finished dinner and he passed away like we were trying to get him out to the car to take him to the hospital and, you know and and I, I'm thankful for the permission that we can all um, there's no wrong way to grieve. And I like that you type that in, JoJo. I'm like, yeah, write it down. And because somebody had questioned my girlfriend and she stayed with us and we helped her do the funeral arrangements. And she, somebody said something about, um, because she, my girlfriend was thinking, 
oh my gosh, this is so perfect that I'm with you guys and you know how it all came about. And um, I just, um, so I was like, you know, maybe we were like being too light about it because oh, we knew he had health issues. And, and then I, so I was double checking my thoughts and this morning talking to my husband about that. But no, I think it's okay that we responded how we responded and we just were very supportive of each other in that. And so that's just nice to hear that there is no right or wrong. It's just, you know, and then this week I didn't know about, I woke up on um, Monday morning and I, I saw a Facebook post by a friend of mine that's from Anchorage, Alaska, who said, we're up, we're in our hotel and we're, we're safe. And I thought, well, that's an odd thing to say. So I clicked on it and that's how I found out. But it was kind of that gut, you know, feeling of like the 9-11, you know, I knew where it was and what was happening that morning. And so, yeah, absolutely. It's been a, a week of, you know, sending out love and prayers for everybody. Cause what can we do? Well, love. You know what? Thank you, Lori. Lori, that's a lot that you've gone through. It's polytraumatic. Okay. So now you've gone through two different things that can be very traumatizing. And, you know, the compassionate center for uh, the compassion, it's Nathan Adelson's compassionate center for care has an amazing program. And I would call them. Um, if you want to, you can call me too, and I'll give you the information, but they have support groups that are amazing. And you can call me 702 626 9400 and I will get you the information for those support groups and if you need to call me and talk to me please feel free thank okay? you thank you mm -hmm. and honor funny. yourself honor and you're right you you can you you there's no right or wrong and I think one of those things that are that that judge that's not there is that guilt thing and or if I only would have or if I could have or I should have and that that is just useless the grieving and the and the the great memories and and the laughing and the crying that that's much more it's holly we can't hear you there's no more. are you there try to unplug your earpiece and see if that helps for beneficial part just give it, you hear me now yep there you go is this better? Yeah, that's good. We got you. I was just going to say, just, it, you know, just if you want to, you can call me and, um, you know, just give yourself plenty of love and compassion at this time for sure. Mm. And, and don't listen to the judge that tells you that, you know, the woulda, coulda, shoulda. That's really a, not a good use of time. Either. Just cry mm. when you're sad. Right? Be happy when you're happy. And if you need me, call me. Thank mm. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Holly. I, we are at time, you guys. Can you believe it? I know that, that 30 minutes goes by so quick. And um, thank you for your words of wisdom. And I think it helps us all ease our heartache a bit. And um, it's good to know that, you know, it's okay to, to do it in our own way and feel it in our own, in our own way. And um, it's not right or fair for anyone to judge that on us to... Uh, tell us that we should do it their way so thank you for that and um, I uh, next week um, Liddy's going to be here and she's going to be uh, we're going to go back to some some physical health so after our little bit of grieving um, we might be having some stomach pain so if we do we're going to have a little talk about gut issues next week but you know um, back to some physical but for now, I just want everybody to take a deep breath together and, and say thank you to Holly for being here with us and thank you all for helping on and, and bringing your energy into this and helping us lift each other up in such a time of sadness. And um, everyone, send out a big kiss to Holly for a big thank you. And have an amazing week. And I will post Holly's information up in the group and I'll also add her into the page. And so if there's anything that you want to ask, I'm sure she'd be, um, she's been really awesome into just sharing her time with us tonight. And um, we know that she's going to be there for us because that's what she does. 
because that's who she is. So thank you all for being on. Love to see all your faces. And we'll see you next week. Bye.